This week on Command N, the cutest reptiles on the web, sleeping in internet cafes, and iPhone news you won't want to miss. Welcome to episode 172 of Command N. I'm Amber. Will is still hanging out at the Pyramid, so I'm hosting solo one more time. We're here in downtown Toronto on a beautiful spring day. And before we get into the tech headlines of the week, I wanted to mention that we're still having a contest with Mesh. So you have a chance to win one of two Mesh tickets, one for Mesh and one for Mesh University. The conference is taking place in Toronto in April. All you have to do to win a ticket is send us an email to info at commandn.tv and tell us in 140 characters or less why you deserve to win one of these tickets. Our headlines this week are sponsored by our good friends at GoDaddy.com. All you have to do if you want to sign up for any of their hosting packages is enter the promo code COMMAND10, that's the number 1 and the number 0, and you'll get an extra 10% off your purchase. For our first headline this week, we're going to travel to the other side of the world. The economy is not looking so hot right now in Japan, and some workers who are out of jobs are choosing to spend the night in internet cafes. For just $9 a night, they're sleeping on the floor in these cafes, and the sad news is they're not even surfing the web. Won't you be my friend? Don't deny me. I just want some friends on Facebook. If you're a Facebook user like millions of people around the world, you probably noticed some major changes on the site. There's the Twitter-like news feed, and they've also enabled it so that users can make their profiles public. So this means that people can view your profile even if they're not your friends. This is great for someone like myself who doesn't care about sharing that information online. And don't worry, for those of you out there who are worried about privacy, you still have the option to make all of your information private. We all love to check out YouTube for some of the latest videos, but what you probably don't notice is the thousands of videos that are taken off the site on a daily basis. Now, if you want to find out what these videos are, check out a new project from MIT called YouTube. This is a place where you can go and see what videos have been taken down for alleged copyright violations. Now, you can check videos from the BBC. There's also videos from Warner Brothers. The bad news is you can't view any of these videos on the site, but you get a sense of the videos that have been removed. YouTube's been like a father to me, except YouTube's not an alcoholic. One of the top sites on my radar this week is called Cute as Hell. This is a social network for pet owners, but it also has an element of hot or not. The idea is you can go in and rate all of the different pet photos that are uploaded to the website. Now these are pet photos of dogs, cats, fish, birds, and my favorite, reptiles. Now, I never thought of reptiles as being that cute, but there are some classic pictures on this website. If you're one of millions of users on Twitter and you want to check out the most popular people on the microblogging site, Kevin Rose has launched a new service called WeFollow.com. This enables you to check out the top tweeters per categories, such as celebrities, social media experts, and so on. And you can even add yourself to the list. Now we're going to check in with Jeff in Halifax, where he tells us the latest iPhone news. Hi, I'm Jeff MacArthur, and this week we've got a spotlight on the iPhone OS 3.0 preview. The new OS adds more than 100 new features and answers some long-standing customer developer requests. So let's see what we've got. In my opinion, the most important addition is in-app purchasing. This allows for developers of paid applications to offer additional content for a fee from within the app itself using the iTunes Store infrastructure. For instance, you could buy additional levels for a game, some more books for an e-reader app, subscriptions to other content, and lots more. I think this is probably one of the more promising avenues for struggling newspapers and magazines who are caught between expensive hard copies and online content that no one will pay for. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. There's also, finally, system-wide copy and paste controls, and a reasonable interface for doing so as well. Let's say I want to select the entire block down here. Again, double tack to select that. And now I'll put my thumb on that right grab point. I get a magnifier for the selection. Drag it down, select that entire block, and say copy. I've now selected the whole block. Again, drag back to the top, double tap, and paste. 
While Apple has avoided running background apps because of energy and performance issues, they have finally delivered on push notifications, so third-party apps can notify users even if that app is not running. All of Apple's apps can now use landscape mode, including, thankfully, mail and notes. And Apple has included multimedia messaging in their SMS app, allowing sending of photos, contacts, audio files, and locations. There's also Bluetooth support for devices like speakers, headphones, car audio, and more, and the ability for auto discovery and peer-to-peer -peer connectivity over Bluetooth, which paves the way for contact sharing, multiplayer games, and lots of other cool applications. Made for iPod devices can now also communicate directly with the iPod through the dock connector or through Bluetooth, which allows device-based controls to be accessed through your iPhone interface and turn-by-turn -turn directions will now also be available through GPS, although developers will have to provide their own maps. There's lots of other features too, including a new Apple Voice Memo app, Spotlight searches across all key applications, and Calendar now supports Yahoo, Google, and other CalDAV-based calendars. The iPhone OS 3.0 is available for developers now and will be released to the general public this summer. I can't wait. That's all for this week. I'm Jeff MacArthur. Enjoy. Our web pick this week is from Twitter user Michael from Rhode Island. He sent us a link to photofunnia.com, a place where you can upload any of your pictures and give them more than 100 special effects. Some of my favorites are the Andy Warhol gallery treatment, the urban landscape effect, and I also love this magazine cover. Now, if you have a web pic you want to send us, all you have to do is send an email to info at commandn.tv, or you can visit us in the comments at commandn.tv. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. On Facebook, why can't we all be friends? Why can't we all be friends? Why can't we all be friends? I want to say crankety chairs. I have no idea why I want to say this. Yeah. Okay. This is a keeper. Can't we all be friends on Facebook?